Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Assemblywoman Cotty Petri Norris. And Cotty, it was so nice to see you not too long ago in person. Lisa, it was wonderful, wasn't it? It, uh, it feels like it has been just far too long. And it is so wonderful to be able to, to come together as a community again. Yeah, and it, it was a really nice event in which you will discuss a little bit later. So let's go over our COVID numbers uh, that we usually do. And, and like you have indicated, light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. And Lisa, it's always great to be here, but especially when we really do have so much good news to celebrate and so many reasons to feel hopeful. Over the last several months, our COVID-19 infection rates, hospitalization rates have continued to decline. They are now at an all-time low. And for now three weeks running, California, we have the lowest COVID-19 positivity rates in the entire country. And like you said, the, the light at the end of this tunnel really has never been brighter. Yeah, that's, that's really good news. I didn't realize that uh, California had the lowest numbers. That's great. I mean, I think our vaccinations have been really high here in Orange County as well as California as a whole. So that's, that's a wonderful thing. Absolutely. And vaccines have been such a critical part of our successful success story. Across the state of California, more than 30 million COVID-19 vaccines have been administered. More than 40% of Californians are fully vaccinated right now. And those numbers are even higher here in Orange County. And as you know, even higher in Laguna Woods. And uh, as you said, we were able to, to see each other along with a couple hundred members of the community a couple of weeks ago at the Laguna Woods Village vaccine site that uh, has been such an incredible and successful partnership with Memorial Care. And it was great just to have the opportunity to thank the hundreds of volunteers from Memorial Care and from Laguna Woods Village that really made that possible. Yeah, it was it was quite a quite an amazing feat to pull all of that off. In fact, I don't think any other place in all of the country was able to do that. So uh, more power to those that were leading the the efforts. Absolutely, it's been an incredible incredible team effort and uh, and such a success. Yeah, well, thank you for coming to that. That was great to see you, and I'm glad you were able to address everybody. So so awesome. I saw you're in the waving with everybody else in the, <laughs> the final photo there. So that, that's good. It, it was great, wasn't it? It was. I, I was. I was so emotional that day, and I think, I think a lot of us are. We've all been through an incredibly difficult year, and I think to, to be in this moment where, where there's and finally hope and optimism and joy, it, uh, it feels really, really good. Yeah. Now, now for the vaccinations, it's been opened up now to uh, 16 and over, right? That's right. And, and as you may have seen just recently, uh, the Pfizer vaccine has been approved for uh, children between the ages of 12 and 15. Mm -hmm. So the rollout of, uh, of those vaccines is expected to commence shortly as well. So there isn't, a, there's no concerns or, or, or why would they target that particular age group? Is, is that a necessity? Well, so uh, what we've seen is that for children that are younger than 12, they really react to the virus very differently, both in terms of the way that it is carried or spread and also the, how serious it becomes. So um, unlike the seasonal flu, where we see young kids are actually super spreaders and, and super disease vectors, the COVID-19 virus, the opposite is true. Once you get children that are starting to go through puberty, so kind of 12 and over, that chemistry starts to change and the way that they transmit the virus is a little more similar to adults. So that is why the, the older children are a priority to also include in vaccination. And so Pfizer just recently uh, released the results of their clinical trials for that age group and uh, has been in the process of getting FDA approval for that age group as well. Okay, all right, that's good information. Now, in regards to vaccinations, if somebody still needed a, an appointment, I think, like you said, it's pretty readily available. Where, where should they go? Yeah, appointments right now across the county are readily available. Uh, you can go to Athena.com to make an appointment. Uh, you can also call the, the county's Athena hotline, which is 
834-2000. And if you're having trouble getting through, if you're having trouble getting an appointment, you can also call our office uh, and we can help you. Our, our office number is 949-251-0074. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And um, so you've also got a couple of uh, bills and things that are coming up here. What, uh, what do you have going on? Well, Lisa, we've, we've been working on uh, a number of exciting initiatives. We've, we've been pushing uh, initiatives to support our local small businesses to better prepare for wildfire season, to improve health care for, uh, for California seniors. And I just wanted to touch on a couple of the, the bills that we've got moving through the legislature right now and highlight a couple of things we're working on. Uh, one bill, AB 540, will increase access to a program called PACE, which is the program for all-inclusive care for the elderly. And that program provides comprehensive health care for our most vulnerable seniors across the state. Um, we're also excited to be working uh, with the Alzheimer Association on uh, SB 48 in partnership with one of my Senate colleagues, Senator Monique, Monique Lamone. And the goal of this bill is to help Californians who are affected Alzheimer's or dementia to get an early diagnosis and ensure access to better care management, um, which is such, a, such an important issue as our California population con continues to age. Um, and then the last thing I wanna touch on is AB 954. We're working with the Laguna Woods City Council on this proposal. Um, the goal is to, to give Laguna Woods firefighters, you have firefighters that are working in Laguna Woods, some more resources so that we can improve uh, wildfire preparedness and community safety. So we know wildfire threats now, that it's a year round threat and uh, we need to ensure that our community is prepared. So we'll, we'll keep you posted on, uh, on all of those as, uh, as the year unfolds. Oh, that's good. That's good to know. I, I think the residents will be pleased to know. I mean, we do our part in trying to help them prepare with our disaster preparedness uh, group that we have, and they do you know, obviously work with our security and also the local fire station. So uh, anything is welcome, I'm sure. Now, uh, in terms of some things that you have, you had some activities and then you've got some other activities that are coming up. Yeah, we just, uh, last weekend, we had a uh, very successful vaccine clinic at Irvine Valley College uh, this past Saturday, May 8th. And also wanna flag a couple of uh, exciting community events that are coming up. We've got a uh, e-waste e recycling drop-off event at the Orange County Waste and Recycling Center in Irvine. That's on May 15th. I actually have a little bag of, got like my old laptop and you know a broken wow. computer. My husband's that's been in my garage for like two years. So I'm looking wow. forward to dropping it off on May 15th. And we do have uh, another event. It's a virtual self-defense workshop. Uh, the California Highway Patrol is helping us put that together and put that on. And that's going to be on May 25th. Oh, that's great. That's nice. And then it's kind of, you know, sometimes people don't like to go to those things in person mm -hmm. because then they feel kind of weird. So now you can totally do it in your house and no one's watching. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it's, yes. It's, it's that phrase, dance like nobody's watching. It's, you know, practice your self-defense moves like nobody's watching. And you can do all the high yas you want. No exactly. one's going to hear Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Awesome. And then, of course, always if uh, people want to uh, reach you, how should they do that? Well, Lisa, we've got uh, remote remote office hours now via Zoom uh, every Monday from 1 to 2 p.m. So folks can go ahead and, and go online onto our website to make an appointment for, for that or you can reach us at any time. So if, if you've got a question, if you've got anything that we can help you with, we're here to help. And you can always reach my office on 949-251-0074. All right, excellent. Well, always great information. Good to see you again. And uh, let's touch base in a couple of weeks and we'll hopefully have the amazing information that we've moved to that one tier we can't wait to get to. <laughs> that is right. That's right. We are all systems go. We are pushing towards the, the governor has, has set out a goal for California that on June 15th, we are going to be able to retire this, the blueprint. We're going to be able to stop this tier system and we're going to be able to fully reopen the economy and be back to business as usual. So Man, we are looking forward to that for sure. All right. Excellent. Thank you again. All right. Good to see you. Thanks, Lisa. You too. And we'll be right back after this.